Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I've got this really cool tip I'm going to show you inside of Photoshop that's going to enable you to use a filter in maybe a way it's not normally used and that's going to help us adjust different colors on our photograph really easily. And I apologize for the low quality of this, normally my videos are much better produced but I don't want to miss this week's upload. I'm on the road right now and ironically, the first time in about two years I've missed my Tuesday upload is because I'm actually at YouTube uh, doing some teaching uh, for an Adobe event. So anyway, uh, why don't we move ahead with this effect right now. So what I want to do is we're going to go to maybe a familiar filter, just going down our adjustments here, and we're going to grab something called black and white. So let's just click on it. Notice what it does is it converts it to black and white. But we're not going to use it this way. One of the things I noticed about the black and white is we can shift our underlying tones to create, you know, better looking black and white images. Well, one of the thoughts I had was what if I take this and I apply it to a color image and use this to adjust the different colors, kind of like luminosity masking, except with color. And we can easily do that by using blending modes. So all we need to do is check this layer here and we choose our blending mode. And if we go down here, there's a couple of blending modes at the bottom. One of them is color and color means it will take on the color and not affect anything else. Luminosity means that it's gonna take on the luminosity and not affect the color. So that means now this black and white layer is not affecting color, only luminosity. And so you see when I turn that on, notice how it looks different already. If I choose auto, it's going to choose a selection. It's just going to kind of find something on its own. And let's look at it before and after. And you can see already we've got a huge difference. So what happens is as we move these sliders, it's going to affect the different tones. For example, let's go reds. And as we start to move the reds, notice what it does is it affects these areas of the rock that have the reds in there. So if I go to the left, it's going to darken those areas. If I go to the right, it's going to lighten them. So I can go in and play around. Now these rocks being orange means they're a combination of red and yellow. So I can do the same thing. I can brighten up or darken down the yellow tones. So why don't we darken the yellow tones a little bit and brighten the red tones just a touch. And notice how this really changes these rocks. Let's look at it before. And after, see how it gives it just a little bit of a richer tone, or makes it, makes it look like the sun is kissing it a little bit more. So if we go down here and we got the cyans and blues, notice how this affects the water. So if I take these cyans down, notice what it's doing is it's making these rings look a little bit more, um, makes them look more predominant. And basically what I did here was just to show a slow shutter speed um, with an ND filter on there to capture this. So it was, and we take the blues, we can brighten or darken the blues. See that, how that affects it as well. So I'm looking at the regions around here. Let's see how that looks. I can increase it to make it look more foggy or take it to the left, bring more detail in there. It makes it look almost icy. Let's do that right now. We're gonna take it to there and let's see what magentas do. I see that magentas are affecting us a little bit in these reflection areas, some of these areas there. You'll notice that. So why don't we take that to a little bit, I'm going to push that a little bit to the left and it just kind of shows a little bit more detail here. So now let's have a look and see what we've done before and after you can see how it's really started to change the image. Now the other thing we can do is we can grab this little finger uh, tool here and we can actually click on certain areas and notice as we go into these areas now we can really start to sculpt our image. So maybe I want to brighten those up a little bit. It's looking pretty good, but we also need to balance it here. So let's grab that. Just find a nice balance right there. So now if we look at it before and after, you can see what we're doing. We're kind of doing, I guess, like luminosity masking, but once again, we're using color as those underlying layers. Okay, so here's the thing we can take this a little further. If I hide this adjustment for now, Let's choose our background, which is our image, and we're going to go to Camera Raw and we're going to give this a little punch. So let's go Filter and we're going to choose Camera Raw Filter. And a couple of the things I want to do is I'm going to go down here to Texture and I'm going to push this up. Now Texture was something that was added recently inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw. 
If you don't see it um, and you're on CC, just update to the latest version and you'll see that. Otherwise, you could use Clarity to get a similar effect. The big difference is if we use Clarity here, see how it brings it out, but it tends to put a little bit more halos around there. So texture can get us a similar uh, effect, the detail, without the side effects of those halos around the edges. So let's also go down to Vibrance and give Vibrance a little bit of a push and we can also play around for color temperature if we want. We could push it to the left for more blues, push it to the right for more reds and oranges to just kind of um, really make that pop. I'm just going to maybe push it a little bit to the left so we can get a little bit more in the blues. Click OK. All right, so now we've made the adjustment. Let's see what happens when I put my black and white adjustment layer back on. Notice that. See how we get a nice difference there. So now we can go back in here. And now we've given us a little punch. We can refine the blues and maybe we don't have to get so aggressive with the blues anymore. We can go back, push it up a little bit and let's go back into our yellows, back to our reds, maybe give it a little bit more there. And so now we can see if we go before and after. Look at the big difference that this is making. Now, there might be some areas when you're looking at it and saying, hey, you know, I like the before better, like maybe on these rocks over here on the side. So this is the advantage in using this method. If I hit the B for the brush tool, I can actually mask these and I want to make sure I've got black as the foreground color. D key resets, and then hit the X key makes black now the foreground color. Make sure we're on the layer mask there. And you'll see layer mask up in the properties. Now we can just go in and we can paint it away in that area. Now, if you don't want to go so um, forceful, you could drop your opacity down to maybe about 50%. And we could go in some of these other areas and just start to just kind of paint these in a little bit where we want to just kind of combine the two. Maybe back here, just a little bit on the horizon there. And see what it's doing. It's just bring a little bit more detail on those blues without going so heavy handed. So we're just going in there. So now if we look at this, we've got our before and our after, and you can see how we can really start to sculpt the image using this tool. One of the things I love doing is playing around with tools and just kind of trying those tools in a different way. Like sometimes you, there's all kinds of functionality you can get by maybe using a tool in a way it's not intended. Now, if you have something like that or a tip that you have of a tool that you like to use in a different kind of a way, why don't you drop that in the comments underneath? Also, if this has helped you, drop a comment as well. And anyway, guys, thanks for watching this. If you like Photoshop tutorials, hit the subscribe button right now and you'll get a new video from me usually every single Tuesday. Also, my videos are usually just a little bit more polished than I was this week because I'm on the road. I'm using the audio on my laptop, so I apologize for not having the best quality that you're used to, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging without a tutorial. So if you appreciate my effort in giving you a tutorial, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.